Let's design a power cable for our jackhammer using the onshape routing curve functionality. The first item to do is add the requisite components. Let's insert a released Reve version of this two pole power plug. Then we'll insert a released cable sheath so that the cable doesn't get crimped up too much as we drop it in. Let's adjust the location of our power plug to represent where we think it'll be uh, when we render this thing later for our production manual. We'll just kind of rotate the cord around using the on-screen manipulators. These on-screen manipulators will actually be beneficial as we go forward with this demonstration. One nice thing to do is add a mate connector as a new origin. This will make your life a lot easier when you start adding a new part to your design at the assembly level. Here, we're going to select that mate connector as the origin of a new part studio because we're doing in-context design managed at the assembly level. You can see the assembly appears as a ghost object in a new part studio. Now here, we can go ahead and start adding some reference points. In this case, I'll use the powerful mate connector once again to help me locate places for my cable to orient itself. Unchecking the owner entity option is a great thing. That way we don't have to have ownership of that mate connector on any single part. Let's use the new routing curve option, which is really like a 3D sketch, except kind of purpose built for the power that we need for this application. I'm going to continue to add points where needed, adding a point at the beginning at the mate connector, and then clicking add point again anytime I want to jog around a corner. I don't need to use a tab key or anything like that. I'm using the mate manipulator that we saw earlier uh, for locating the component is also available for moving around our design. You can translate, move, and rotate, as well as type in numbers. You can also type in numbers in the points box as well. So now that I've selected all the points that make sense for me to route through, I can sweep along that new curve that was just created. Here, just use the normal sweep option here, sweep it along that new curve, and voila, we have a part that represents our cable. Let's go ahead and rename that cable. It's important for data management. Maybe change the color of it. But what if we want to alter the cable in any way? You can see it's a 917 millimeter cable right now. It's calculating the length, but we can modify it. And I love the power of the final option. When you hit final, you can actually see the resultant shape of the sweep ensuring that you're not crimping it beyond its minimum bend radius, right? You know, you can see right there, I, I went a little too far, but if I move back up again or set that to zero, we're gonna see it go right back to where we expect it. We can also add new segments. It will give you this handy midpoint with an orthogonal kind of grid that you can pick on. So I've added two more points that I can then just go ahead and move up and down to get the exact shape that I want. You can see the cable length is updating you'll move that out of plane right there so we can you know have this kind of come out more normal to the end of the plug right so you can see with all the adjustments here you know it's very easy to to get the shape that you're looking for without any reference geometry right i need to set up planes or axes you know i put in a couple of mate connectors to help myself out uh, but as you know Mate connectors are better than planes because it's like a plane and a point all wrapped in the one. It's kind of magical, right? So now we got about a thousand millimeter long cable right here. Of course, we can modify things, you know, as, as long as we want by picking the points that exist and moving them along or use that segment option to add more points. All right, I think we're looking pretty good here. You know, once we uh, get kind of normal to that. There are many other ways I could have gotten there parametrically, but I was just eyeballing it. But there is our finished power cable, which we'll insert in the assembly. I like renaming my context, by the way, just so I know which context I'm working with because Onshape allows for multiple contexts of an assembly. And there's our cable right there. And let's just reorganize our assembly a little bit. Let's just select those three parts that I added, move them to a brand new subassembly, 
will uh, locate it in the uh, tab list at the bottom and just right click and rename it, you know, so that we have something to manage when we release it uh, for production and share it with our supplier. So let's drag that into the power folder as well. So that's how you make a quick and simple power cable inside of Onshape.